welcome to another episode of Access Ability. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility, and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games, and more people to see themselves in the games they play? Toward the end of last week, Capcom released Resident Evil 8 Village, the newest entry in their ongoing survival horror shooter series. It takes place a year after Resident Evil 7 and is a direct sequel, and features a man whose infant daughter has been kidnapped and he needs to go rescue her. It seems like she's been kidnapped by werewolves and or vampires? Much like Resident Evil 7 before it, Resident Evil 8 is a first-person survival horror shooter, which means that you are exploring, solving puzzles, and shooting enemies that try and eat your face, all through the eyes of the player character you're seeing in a first-person perspective. Now, a lot of the way that this game builds its horror and its tension is through this limited perspective. You don't know what's coming sometimes right until it's about to get you, and the way that sounds and half-seen things through the corner of your eye are used to build up that tension are a big part of what this game is trying to do in terms of setting its tone. So today, on Access Ability, we're going to be talking about the accessibility settings that are present and are lacking in Resident Evil 8 Village. We're going to be talking about some of the basic settings that were either omitted or were not done to a high enough level of quality. We're going to talk about some of the groups of disabled players who may find it difficult to play through this game. And we're going to talk about some of the things that could have been done to a higher level of quality or added into the game's settings to make it more accessible to disabled players. Let's start this week's episode of Access Ability by talking about the accessibility settings which are present in Resident Evil 8 and are implemented in mostly useful ways. Resident Evil 8 Village features three default difficulty modes when you first boot up the game, which automatically alter a few in-game settings when chosen. While the game doesn't explicitly tell players what will be changed based on their difficulty mode selection, it seems that easy mode impacts the movement speed, health, and damage output of enemies, as well as giving the player more plentiful resources as they explore, and a greater degree of autosaves and checkpoints. One unfortunate aspect of the game is that players cannot change their difficulty mid-playthrough, so if you discover a few hours in you've made the game too easy or too difficult, you can't change that without starting over from scratch. Players who have difficulty with aiming can activate aim assist, which is an on-off toggle rather than being a setting that could be altered in intensity. Players who turn on aim assist will find that, when aiming, their gun will usually snap fairly effectively to the torso of enemies, with a stick flick used to move the targeted spot to locations such as the head. This setting makes targeting specific body parts more manageable, but it lacks the customizability of some of the more impressive auto-aim settings out there. For players who may struggle to see a white aiming reticle on screen, Resident Evil 8 does allow players to change their reticle colour. Players can also independently change the volumes of character voices, background sounds, and sound effects, getting a balance that works better for them. Those are the accessibility settings that Resident Evil 8 largely gets right. There's little problems, as I mentioned, things like not being able to change the difficulty once you've started the game, but for the most part those settings are sort of okay and on the right track. For the rest of this video we're going to talk about accessibility settings that are either done very poorly and not implemented properly, or that are absent entirely, because in terms of accessibility it goes downhill from here. For deaf and hard of hearing players, a big barrier to playing Resident Evil 8 is going to be the game's highly lacking subtitle support, as well as the game's overall reliance on sound cues. Village does feature in-game subtitles, but they are a single on-off toggle, with zero customization options. They are small, lack customizable colours, lack speaker tags, and lack a background behind the text. This means that often the text is illegible in certain locations, hard for partially sighted players to make out, fail to inform the player who is speaking in a scene, and are generally tough to glean information from. If you are a profoundly deaf player, you're likely to have difficulty following conversations, and if you're a partially sighted deaf player, you may struggle to read the subtitles at all. But perhaps more importantly for gameplay purposes, the subtitles that are present are purely spoken text subtitles rather than full closed captions. Village relies heavily on audio-only information, not only to build tension, but also to deliver gameplay critical information and the game does nothing to address this in other forms. For example, Resident Evil 8 could have been made more accessible by including text that describes sounds, such as a wooden board clattering to the ground behind you, or a howl being heard off screen, and included on-screen visual indicators as to where that sound came from. 
Additionally, on PS5, the controller's fancy rumble could have been used to indicate sound intensity, direction, and distance. Basically, the game lacks a non-audio way to transfer this information to the player. Basically, Resident Evil 8 doesn't do enough to help deaf players follow conversations, or be aware of audio cues, which is a real shame. For blind or partially sighted players, Resident Evil 8 is, as expected, a very visually dark game, and as a result it'll often be difficult, even for players with perfect eyesight, to see certain in-game elements. This can be mitigated somewhat by cranking up the game's brightness settings, but even with brightness turned up considerably, the game lacks a contrast between game elements that can be hard to distinguish details within. There is very little in the way of visual settings options outside of brightness to help make the game more visible for partially sighted and blind players during particularly dark segments. Additionally, for players like myself who struggle with motion sickness in certain first person games, Resident Evil 8 has been a real struggle to play through, and lacks some of the more important settings that could help mitigate that. Players who struggle with motion sickness can turn off camera wobble, which helps a little, and change the speed of camera movement acceleration, but the game lacks settings such as the ability to increase field of view, or to turn off the bouncing motion of the hands and the gun as the player's running, which are both major factors in inducing motion sickness. If you find first person games hit and miss for you in terms of motion sickness, you may well find yourself struggling to play through this game without frequent breaks, like I myself did. Overall, Resident Evil 8 does go above the, the bare minimum, it does include some settings, there are some things that are helpful, but it's missing so many settings that really should be standard by this point. If you're going to include subtitles, you need to make sure that they can be made larger, that you can put a background behind them, that you can change the colour of them, that you have things that aren't spoken text included, so that you have speaker tags and sound effects that are important for the player to understand the tone of the narrative. You need to let players change the difficulty of the game midway through, you need to make sure that motion sick players can really get into tweaking the things that will actually help them. This game has some settings, but it just fails in so many regards to be accessible. The modern Resident Evil games, both Resident Evil 7 and 8, are fantastic survival horror experiences. It's just a shame that they aren't more accessible to more players, because I fundamentally think that everyone deserves the right to be chased around by a big ten foot tall vampire dominatrix lady and be equal parts terrified and horny. Can we all agree? Everyone deserves that. <laughs>